Good morning. Today is the 15th of February, already halfway through the month. Hard to believe. Um, but I want to welcome you to Coffee in the Word this morning. I've got a great cup of coffee here and a beautiful setting to be able to reflect on the scripture a little bit. On Sunday, we talked about what it means to have a gospel identity. And if you remember, we talked about all the things that our identity does not come from, our achievements, our actions, our, you know, accumulate, what we accumulate, et cetera, et cetera. And then we talked about what we do get our identity from and, and who we are in Christ. We are adopted in him we are accepted in him we are approved in him by his righteousness we are active in christ and we are assured in christ now that fourth one is what i want to talk about this morning because it would be very easy to think that I had contradicted myself or the scripture by talking about being active in Christ when we had just finished saying that we're not identified by our actions. Our identity doesn't come from that. And yet, the scripture all through the New Testament talks about us being active and Paul talked about in that passage in Philippians chapter 3 that he pressed toward the mark and the high calling of God in Christ Jesus and um, striving and all of those things that he was talking about and which sounds very active and it and it is um, and we must keep the very clear distinction between doing things in order to make God accept me or to try to earn God's love and acceptance as opposed to knowing we have God's love and acceptance and living into those things. Someone sent me a message this week and said that they have a, a saying that they've gone by that... Um, I do what I do because of who I am. I'm not who I am because of what I do. Or it might have been the other way around. But that's exactly the, the, the point that we're trying to make. So being active in Christ and living into our identity and I think that's, that's the important way to say that not trying to live up to something, but to live into who we are in Christ. We're not trying to live up to a standard so that we can gain or earn something. We're seeking to live into something that we know we have. And I have to say to you that this is somewhat fraught sometimes with a real struggle for us because we often have a sense of entitlement with God and we often will judge things based upon because and and I'll take a step back before I make that statement uh, we often judge things in a transactional way if I'm good God will bless me if I do the right thing, God will give me what I want and need. And we connect those two things together. When God says, I love you, I accept you, I'm blessing you with many things, live into that. And there's going to be some hard things that come don't go back and 
correlate those things somehow with your identity and correlate the difficulties and the struggles in life with whether God loves you or not. And let's be honest, that's exactly what we do so often. We look at our lives and we look at the circumstances around us and we say, kind of like Job did, or Job's friends at least did in the beginning, what have I done, God? How have I sinned? What is it that has created this situation where you're angry with me? When in fact, Job and Job's friends didn't know what was going on behind the scenes. And we don't know often what's going on, what's in God's plan. But we do know, and this is one of the things that, that I often think through and try to remind myself of, myself of, we do know that this world is broken and that we are in the midst of a sin a sinful world, a world that is groaning under the weight of sin, Romans 8 puts it, um, and going through the pangs of childbirth until we are finally delivered from this body of death, Paul says. And so, uh, interestingly, <laughs> We don't look at anybody in the world who doesn't, who doesn't love God and say to them, well, see there, that bad thing happened to you, so God doesn't love you. No, we, we say, no, God does love you in the midst of, of your suffering and pain and, and sin. Remember what the scripture says, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So, our problem is we try to connect the activity with God with our actions. And we can't do that. So, being active in Christ is living into an identity we already have. Let me mention just a couple of examples of this that, and there are many more, and it's something that I think we as God's people need to explore every day of our lives. Um, it's kind of like getting a, a, a card that gives us privileges, that allows us access into certain places, and going back and reading the instructions and finding out what privileges do we have because we have this special card. Well, we have an identity in Christ. And it's not just a smokescreen or just a title. It, it actually is some amazing things that are true about us. We're adopted, we're accepted, we're approved, we're, we're assured in Christ. So how do we live into that? How do, how, how do we be, become active and continue to live into that identity? Two, two examples, and then I'm going to leave you to work out some of the rest of them. The first one is boldness to come into the presence of God in prayer. Boldness, confidence to come into the presence of God in prayer. Hebrews 4.12 says it this way, let us then with boldness or with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. If we are true sons and daughters of God, then we can boldly come before God and rest there. Come and ask 
lean into God's presence, put our burdens at his feet, let him help us carry them. And that boldness may be to ask for a particular thing that you desperately want or need, recognizing that his will is to be done, and trusting him to do what is right. But just the access into God's presence is such an amazing thing. Do we take advantage of that access? Do we boldly come to him? And remembering what prayer often does, it helps us align our hearts with God's agenda. And often we hesitate to genuinely ask God for the things that we desperately need. And the scripture says we boldly have that access into his presence. So we need to live into that. We need to live into our position in Christ. The second practical thing we can do to be active and live into our identity is with humility and confidence deal with our sin. With humility and confidence deal with our sin. The fact that we are already approved in Christ through the righteousness that Christ has given us, imputed to us, is really an unbelievable and, and incredible truth. We are righteous before Christ, before God, because of Christ. So, our sin has been dealt with. Paul wrestles with, with the sin problem that he has in, in Romans chapter 7. He talks about the sin that he doesn't really want to do. He does. The good that he wants to do, he struggles to do. And, and there's this wrestling match that is happening in Romans 7. And anybody with any honesty and humility in their lives will admit that they have wrestled in that same place. They've been where Paul is and, and what he describes in Romans 7. And the wonderful thing is when he gets to the end of that, that wrestling match in chapter 7, he asked the question, who, oh, who's going to deliver me from this body of flesh? And he says, thanks be to God through the Lord Jesus Christ, through what God has done for us in Christ. And then he starts off chapter 8, and I'm going to read a couple of verses from there. Then he says this, there is therefore, because of all of that wrestling, there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. Beginning place is a place of humility. No condemnation. No condemnation. God is not sitting up in heaven waiting to condemn us for committing sin. That is an amazing truth. Because Christ has already taken our condemnation. And so as we are, are wrestling with sin on a daily basis, the first thing we recognize is that God is not waiting to condemn us. 
so many people I talk to are saying, yeah, but, but I, I've sinned. Am I going to go to hell? Am I now going to be punished by God? And these are people who have, have accepted Christ, following Him by faith, that, that kind of thing. They know they're believers in Christ, and yet they still struggle because of that problem of sin. So first know that there is no condemnation. Secondly, he goes on here and he says that we know that the, the law of the spirit of life sets us free from the law of sin and death. And he goes on and says, for God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh but according to the spirit so there's a key word there the spirit the spirit of God this the law of the spirit of life helps to set us free from the law of sin and death. That daily walking, not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit, and dealing with that sin on a daily basis, allowing the Spirit of God to help us to live into our righteous position. Two practical ways that we can live into our identity. Boldness to come before God in prayer and confidence and humility to deal with our sin. There are many, many more. I challenge you to continue to study and, and look at those things and understand your identity and live into it. Let me pray for us. Father, we thank you so much for your grace and goodness and mercy. Thank you that we have an identity that cannot be shaken because it's not something we earned. It was something we were given in Christ. May we live into that identity. Be active in it every day. Bless and guide us as we go through our day today and help us to live as adopted accepted, approved, assured children of God and help us to be active in living that identity today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for tuning in this morning and we look forward to seeing you on Sunday. We're continuing our study through our Love Jesus, Love One Another, and Love Our City. On Sunday, we start the first of two weeks in loving one another and we'll be looking at the characteristics of love then so god bless we'll see you then